Hello, my friend. How are you doing? <laughs> so good to be here with you one more time with our Bible studies here from Victory Church in Odessa, Texas. This is the episode number five of the series Romans. I am Gian, the founding pastor of Victory Church. And from Odessa, Texas, I say hello to you. Thank you for joining us. This is a beautiful opportunity that we have to study and reflect God's Word. If you want to know more about Victory Church, go to the website vchurch.us. Also, if you are interested in learning about the other episodes of this series, feel free to go to the Vimeo channel or the YouTube channel or Facebook page or our website, and you will find there the links. This is episode number five. And we are now studying chapter number three in this wonderful study. We read from the easy to read version in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter three. So, do Jews have anything that others don't have? Do they get any benefit from being circumcised? Yes, the Jews have many benefits. The most important one is this. God trusted the Jews with his teachings. It is true that some Jews were not faithful to God, but will that stop God from doing what he promised? No. Even if everyone else is a liar, God will always do what he says. As the scriptures say about him, you will be proved right in what you say, and you will win when people accuse you. When we do wrong, that shows more clearly that God is right. So we can say that God does wrong when he punishes us? That's the way some people think. Of course not. If God could not punish us, how could he judge the world? Someone might say, when I lie, it really gives God glory. Because my lie makes his truth easier to see. So why am I judged as a sinner? It would be the same to say we should do evil so that good will come. Many people criticize us, saying that's what we teach. They are wrong, and they should be condemned for saying that. We need to go a little bit back to chapter 2 in Romans to understand how this is, is being delivered here. And if you probably were with me studying the previous episode, you probably remember that we talk about circumcision and the Jews and how Paul comes to this conclusion saying the true Jew is the one that is a Jew in his heart, the circumcision done by the Holy Spirit by removing the flesh. So that is how the chapter 2 is ending. And then now he takes it from here and asks rhetorically the question, what is the benefit of being a Jew then? <laughs> and he says, well, the first benefit, obviously, it is, he says, because God trusted the Jews with his teachings. And that is something that I want you to see. You as a believer, part of the Israel of God, a true Jew in your heart, being circumcised by the Holy Spirit in your heart, removing the flesh, walking spiritually, free, blessed in Jesus Christ, you now are a somebody, you are somebody that carries the message and the privilege of sharing God's word with people. Right now, as we are reflecting on this passage, there are perhaps thousands of people dying going to hell in the world. Sadly, many people are not uh, right with God. I was one of those. Maybe you are one of those, or you were one of those, walking in that direction. But thanks to the preaching of the gospel, thanks to somebody that reached out to me, thanks to the blessing that I received by listening to the preaching of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, He saved me, rescued me, forgave me, and made me His. And as a result of that, now carrying the message, the teachings, 
makes me special. That is what Paul says here. That's the first benefit of being a Jew. Because they carry, they, the Lord trusted them with his, his teachings. Now, we know that the fact that we become believers, that doesn't make us holy right away in, in terms of our behavior. We know that it takes time to really change all the bad habits. Perhaps, in your case, it's taking longer than you <laughs> you think or you anticipated or maybe somebody else desired. desired because slowly you, you are moving so slowly in this path of a, a holy life being sanctified. And as a result of that, you know, when we fail and we lie and we do all this kind of stuff, the question will come up and we'll say, so what, what God is doing about it? And then Paul says here, <clears throat> even if everyone else is a liar, God will always do what he says. I don't know if you realize how powerful this statement is. Knowing that the good Lord will always do what he says. That is so profound. At the same time brings so much peace into our hearts. Because his promises of forgiveness. Eternal life. Everlasting life. The place where we will not suffer anymore. No more tears. No more sorrow. Rejoicing in his presence with all the saints. Those promises, those words, those things that he has said are going to come through. That is so wonderful. Because it doesn't matter what people say and do. The Lord, once he says something, he will do it. In his time, he will do it. And uh, that is fantastic. Now, we know that we are forgiven. And the Lord expect from, expects from us a great behavior, actually. But we know that not necessarily we will do that right away. And it's going to take time. And we know that every time that we go back to the principles of surrendering and uh, repenting, His grace is going to come upon us. And then Paul says, listen, there are some people saying that our teachings are that we need to continue doing what is wrong so we will see more and more of God's glory. He says, no, 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 no. That's not what we are saying. All that we, we know is that we are forgiven by his grace. And certainly it is required more grace when we sin over and over again. That's what he says, but he is not promoting doing anything wrong. Now, verse 9 So are we Jews better than other people? No. We have already said that those who are Jews, as well as those who are not Jews, are the same. They are all guilty of sin. And everyone knows that humanly speaking, we are pretty much all the same with our unique characteristics, each individual, but Pretty much is, is the same functionality of a human being, naturally and, of course, spiritually. And sadly, we have the tendency to sin. So whether you are a Jew or not, whether your ancestors are Jewish or not, it doesn't matter even if you don't know anything about your ancestors. You, like me and everybody else, We all sin. And Paul says this so clearly here. And he says, all are guilty of sin. Now, from verses 8, uh, so, I'm sorry, from verses 10 through 18, he says some things. I, I need to read it for you. I want you to come with me in this wonderful reading. As the scriptures say, There is no one doing what is right, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who is trying to be with God. They have all turned away from him. And no one, 
and now they are of the of no use to anyone there is no one who does good not even one their words come from mouths that are like open graves they use their lying tongues to deceive others their words are like the poison of snakes their mouths are full of cursing and angry words they are always ready to kill someone everywhere they go they cause trouble and ruin they don't know how to live in peace they have no fear or respect for god i mean th this is so powerful so <laughs> current <laughs> so real it happened that way it's ha it ha it's happening now and will happen all the time it's just it describes human nature right because we all know it's, it's just the sinful nature of everybody. It's what our nature, our sinful nature will lead us to do. Although some people might say, well, I'm not that way. <laughs> I'm really a good person. You know, I always do what is right and on and on. We know that uh, whether things are being revealed in public eventually or not, we all are guilty of sin. So this is powerful. But now I want to talk to you about these passages, this 10 verses 10 through 18. I want to talk to you about two things here. Number one is about Paul's character. And number two is about you. Let's talk about Paul, Paul's character first. Paul is a very intelligent man. He is smart, knowledgeable, educated and uh, and he knows how to present an argument and debate he knows that but i want you to to do a little research here about this verses 3 uh, uh, romans 3 10 through 18 how many scriptures he is quoting here in these passages those scriptures are coming from the book of psalms and it's wonderful. It is wonderful because he's quoting the scripture while he's writing doctrine. My friend, that is something that is very smart. Because he is not just presenting God's word and explaining God's word, but he's also quoting the scripture as a point of reference. Now imagine, just to give you an example, you are in court, and then, for some reason, they are accusing you of something, and you just bring the law, and you explain reading and quoting the law to defend yourself. Whether the judge likes you or not, when you are quoting the law, you are making a point, and you are going to look good, and defend yourself properly with intelligence that's good a good debate so this is what Paul is doing so now I told you I want you to think about this passage about two things one is Paul's character but now let's talk about you you as a believer you need to learn and memorize the scripture. You need to know where certain passages are. How to defend yourself, not just in your mind and the loneliness, uh, whenever you are debating in your mind about this and that, which is very important, right? That you have the source and you can defend yourself, but also it's good that you can present a good debate whenever someone is contradicting you or questioning you about your faith. You know, smart people, they know things, they learn things, they memorize things. And you should do that. You need to learn to memorize the scripture, certain things that are vital for your own, the knowledge of your own, your own doctrine, the teachings of the scripture, where things are located in the Bible. All right, 
Let me move forward because there is so much here. Verse 19. What the law says is for those who are under the law. It stops anyone from making excuses and it brings the whole world under God's judgment because no one can be made right with God by following the law. The law only show, shows us our sin. <laughs> there is no way to be right with God by following the law. You see what he says? The law only shows us our sin because one way or other, we are going to fall short. We know we are not going to fulfill 100% the law. It is impossible. Only one person could do it, the Lord Jesus Christ. But let's continue. Verse 21. But God has a way to make people right, and it has nothing to do with the law. He has now shown us that the new way, which the law and the prophets told us about. God makes people right through their faith in Jesus Christ. He does this for all who believe in Christ. Everyone is the same. I'm in the chapter 3 of Romans, verses 21, 22. Now I'm reading 23. All have sinned and are not good enough to share God's divine greatness. 24, they are made right with God by His grace. This is a free gift. They are made right with God by being made free from sin through Jesus Christ. God gave us Jesus as a way to forgive people's sins through their faith in Him. God can forgive them because the blood sacrifice of Jesus pays for their sins. God gave Jesus to show that he always does what is right and fair. He was right in the past when he was patient and did not punish people for their sins. And in our time, he still does what is right. God worked all this out in a way that allows him to judge people fairly and still and still make right any person who has faith in Jesus. Oh my goodness, this is probably one of the most wonderful passages of the scripture that sustains us as believers, as Christians, knowing that there is nothing else that we need to do other than receiving the free gift of salvation based on the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, his death on Calvary, how he poured out his blood. By faith in Jesus, we are forgiven. By faith, we are made right with God. It has nothing to do with our behavior. We Receive that free gift by faith, by His grace. Isn't it wonderful? Romans chapter 3. Powerful passage. But let me continue now in verse 27. <laughs> so, do we have any reason to boast about ourselves? No reason at all. And why not? Because we are depending on the way of faith. Not on what we have done in following the Lord the law. I mean, we are made right with God through faith, not through what we have done to follow the law. Okay? This is what we believe. God is not only the God of the Jews, He is also the God of those who are not Jews. There is only one God. He will make Jews right with Him by their faith, and he will make also non-Jews right with him through their faith. So, do we destroy the law by following the way of faith? Not at all. Faith causes us to be what the law actually wants. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my friend. 
It's the beauty of the gospel. How the desire of God that always was that we will behave and worship and do what is right, worship him and serve him. We couldn't accomplish it as humans. As humans, we are not able to fulfill it. And actually, Paul declares earlier that they, in fact, the law is just showing us, showing that we are sinners. But it's by faith in Jesus that we are justified. We are, we are made right by faith, whether your ancestors are Jews or not. It's a free gift for you and me and everybody else. The gift of salvation. Have you received that gift in your heart? This is the great opportunity. Just to have the reassurance that we have that. You know what we do? We just embrace the Holy Spirit. We open our hearts. We don't reject the Holy Spirit. We embrace the Holy Spirit. We receive that forgiveness and that salvation. We believe in the powerful sacrificial blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. His death and resurrection Ascension and one day his second coming, the Holy Scripture. And it says that by faith, it is by that faith that actually we become what the law always intended us to be. Holy people. I hope to see you next week for the following episode. <laughs>